I'm going to show you how to fill out a titration lab report um, from doing a set of titrations. Um, it depends on whether or not you are titrating an acid or a base. Um, if you are filling um, this out for um, an acid, uh, you would be putting um, base in your burette. If you were filling this out for a base, you would have put acid into your burette. So those are the two different sets of volumes that I need. Um, so on this um, report, you'll notice that you have uh, the amount of whatever's milliliters for two different things. Uh, one of those things is where your base will be listed, and it could be a variety of different um, bases, uh, but the other one is where your acid is listed, and it could be a variety of different acids. Um, the one that we typically um, will be using in lab will be uh, sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Um, so the concentration of NaOH and the um, concentration of HCl are also necessary for you to be able to um, do the calculations. So if you are high, uh, trying to figure out the um, base, what its molarity is, uh, that would be what your x would be, which means you would need the other three variables. Um, to do this, you would first put a set amount of NaOH in a flask. And generally, um, I would recommend the use of 10. It gives you enough to get a correct number. However, it makes also the math pretty easy. And if it's um, a, got a strong concentration then you um, or a weak concentration, then you have enough to titrate. Um, the amount of HCl is determined on your burette. Uh, the, your, your burette was that, that this um, long, skinny uh, tube that you used to do your calculations. It looked like this, and it was attached to a ring stand. This is the burette. Um, the flask was where you put the, um, the base, the thing that looked kind of like the triangle. Um, you get this number for the amount of HCl um, by doing um, a titration, and the starting point is recorded. So where your acid starts in your burette is recorded. You fill your base with enough acid to change the color to the ever so slightest pink, when you get that point, you have your finished number. So I've got a starting number on my burette and a finished number on my burette. Uh, this is going to be a smaller number. So if I started at zero and I went down to 19.3 as my finished number, then of course the amount that I put in was 19.3. It's a subtraction problem between the two numbers, so 19.3 minus zero. Uh, the concentration of your acid is the, uh, the chemical that you put in the burette yourself, so you know the concentration. It's written on the side of the bottle, and let's just say for mathematical purposes, it was a 0 0.1 molar concentration on my acid that I used to titrate. Um, then to um, do the math, um, I must plug into the following formula. The volume of my base times the molarity of my base equals the volume of my acid times the molarity of my acid. So this is the equation that you use, and you're, in this problem, solving for the molarity of your base. So plug in your numbers. The volume of your base, the amount of your base, is 10 milliliters. The molarity of your base, don't know. So, of course, mathematically, that's x. Equals the volume of your acid. That's the subtraction answer from your burette. And in this problem, it was 19.3. And the molarity of your acid was 0.1 molar. 
then I put this into my calculator, it would be the two that you know the numbers for, 19.3 times 0.1 equals 10x. So I have... ten x equals one point nine three now to isolate my x you divide both sides by ten and then x becomes point one nine three that would be the molarity um, that would be the molarity of my acid and in this spot where I formerly had x which was my unknown I would put Point one nine three. On this paper, it always asks you for your average of your trials. They're asking you to average up the molarities on each of your different trials. To average them up, you take the number that is in this spot, which is the concentration of your base, which was what you were trying to figure out. You add them up, one, two, three, four, and on this paper, five, six, you would add them all up, and then you would divide by six. That's how you get the average of your NaOH.